Um, so let's go ahead and come into Sukhasana. Seated on top of your props, your blankets, or whatever you've got. See, Esther, your dog is huge. He's so big. Do you, well, I don't want you to get up, but later, tell me one day, tell me how much he weighs. 45, that's it? He's so cute and so like rambunctious. <laughs> I think our dog, I think Bucky weighs probably about 90 pounds. He's not as tall as your dog, but he's, he's pretty stocky. He's mostly fur. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, poodles are, they're kind of thin under all that fur, aren't they? Yeah, he's gonna he's get cute. groomed next week, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start. Okay, okay, okay. Babies and dogs, all right. There he is, he came back. Okay, cross your legs at mid shins. Um, center the kneecaps, line up with the top edge of the mat and then lean over one side to the other. Take your hand, upper hamstring, lower buttock, rotate out, draw back. You, we wanna get our knees lower than our hip points. So. That may require that you sit on more height. So maybe blocks or, or additional blankets. But again, we're working to get the knees lower than the two hip points. And then once you've come into Sukhasana, bring your hands, your fingertips into your blankets, your mat or your blocks. Keep your elbows bent, press and lift your side body, spread your collarbone. Spread your front rib cage, your back rib cage, and draw your abdominal wall slightly back away from the clothing. Bring the very tops of your shoulders down away from your ears. Your sacrum and your tailbone move down towards your blanket. So your sacrum moves down and your tailbone goes down and then up. So create that J shape at the lower part of the spine. And then bring the hands together at your heart center Again, tops of your shoulders away from your ears and close your eyes. Begin to center yourselves here using your breath. Ujjayi breath. So it's an audible inhalation, audible exhalation. Your breath moves out into your outer rib cage, your inhalation does. And as you exhale, empty your lungs completely. I'll chant Om, join in or you're welcome to just listen. Oh. Exhale your breath, bow your head, bring your chin to the groove of your neck, bring your hands to the very tops of your legs, press gently into the tops of your legs with the heels of your hands, center your head, and as you take your next exhalation, and slowly open the eyes and release the hands. Very good, guys. Go ahead once more and rotate the lower buttock flesh. Do that on both sides. Again, make sure that you're crossed at your mid shin so you can take your hands right above your kneecaps and you wanna draw in. We'll grab our two blocks, move them out in front of you, whatever level you need. Move the navel up towards the shin bones. Push the blocks forward, really straighten the elbows, hold your weight in your outer knees and your, up, your outer hips and your outer feet. Keep your ears in line with your upper arms as you move your blocks forward. Use your hands into your blocks, so press down to engage the arms, turn the inner eyes of your elbows up towards the ceiling and if you need to, take your arms, your blocks out a little bit wider. And then grip over your blocks and bring them back towards you. 
and then we'll uncross the legs and cross opposite. So whichever leg you had um, closest, bring the opposite one closest to you. And then once more, adjust the buttock flesh. Blocks go out in front again. If you can, you can lower them or you may need to bring them higher, but check your sits bones, guys. Check that they're not moving up towards the, the front of the pelvis. See that your sitting bones are moving away from one another, but also back and up towards your lower back. And then lean forward, lift the breastbone, move the belly button up, push the blocks out in front of you. Straighten your arms. Straighten your arms. Now your weight again, make sure to really keep your weight. Draw your outer hips down, draw your outer feet down and there's a tucking in of your outer hips. Again, push down as if you're gonna push your blocks into the floor and then move your chest up towards your chin. Grip over your blocks and bring them back towards you, perfect. And then we'll stretch our legs out in front. And then let's do a spinal twist. So I'm gonna separate the feet some. I'm at the front edge of the blanket and then I'll bend my left knee and I wanna bring the left foot to the right. So the left foot kind of comes underneath the right sitting bone. Left kneecap straight out in front. Lean over to the left, bring the right foot outside of the left leg and that the right toes point straight out in front of you. Now take both hands to the outer right knee, draw the knee in, hold with the left hand, twist to the right. Take the right hand behind you, draw your outer right hip down and back. So bring your right sitting bone against your mat. Make sure that your right toes face forward. And then everyone, see if you can draw your outer right ankle bone away from your left uh, thigh bone. Move your outer right ankle bone away from your left leg. Move your outer ankle bone, Diana, move it in, away from, that's it. So don't move the foot, guys, but draw the knee in a little bit deeper. Now ground your right sitting bone, lift your chest, twist a little bit deeper, and then exhale, twist to the center or gaze to the center, and release. And again, stretch the legs out and we'll switch sides. So what happens in this pose? Now the right knee bends, but come forward so your right kneecap faces straight out towards the top of your mat. And what that does, guys, watch is it tucks that outer right leg in. And then lean over and you can let the sitting bone come off of the mat to start, but bring the left foot completely against the mat. Draw both hands to the outer knee, pull the outer left knee in, and then the bottom lifts like this. Watch, draw the bottom down and back as you twist to the left. So again, make sure that your left sitting bone is not lifted, but it's drawing down. It's also drawing towards your foot, your heel that's in front. So your outer right hip go, or your outer left hip goes back. That's it. And then the outer hip bone kind of moves down towards the heel that's against the mat. And then again, draw the outer hip back as you twist, lift the spine, great. And then exhale to release, perfect. Stretch the legs out. And let's see if we could do that a little bit deeper, same pose. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm gonna bend the left knee and I'm gonna make sure that this foot is five toes forward on the right foot, but look at the outer right shin bone, watch. I want you to go here with that. So you tuck in, and then I'm gonna lift the chest, move in, keep watching, take the left arm up, and I'm gonna hook all the way into the armpit. And as I do that, draw the leg in, resist the outer right hip behind me, twist to the right. So the only difference in this one and the first one is that we're now trying to hook the armpit, left armpit outside of the right knee. So bend the left knee and make sure the left knee cap goes forward, outer left leg in, lean over, bring the right foot outside of the left knee. Now move that outer ankle bone, outer shin bone away. So the outer right shin bone moves away from the left thigh. Lift the spine, pull your torso in, lift your left arm up, twist to the right. Lean in and hook the back of your left arm, go all the way to the armpit. 
Good. Now draw the outer knee into the back of the arm and draw the outer right hip back. To go a little bit deeper here, guys, let's see if we can straighten the left elbow. So you straighten and you'll bring the left fingertips down to the mat. Draw the right hip back, twist a little deeper. Exhale, gaze center and release. Perfect. And then straighten both of your legs and we'll switch sides. So I'm going to bend the right. I'm at the front edge or the top edge of the blankets. Lean over, bring the outer left foot there. Watch you go in. You'll let the hip come up. I'll take the right arm up, twist to the left, lean in and hook. Now get a good hook here. So you've got to bring your torso in towards your left upper leg. Now draw your outer left hip back, look to your left, extend the right arm and let the right fingertips touch the mat. Draw the outer left leg into the back of the right arm. Draw the leg into the arm, lean in a little bit deeper, see if you can get those fingertips to come down onto the mat, great. You can turn the palm of your hand out so that that upper arm externally rotates. Great, gaze to the center and then release. Very nice, guys. Very, very good. So stretch both of your legs out. Good. And then you can use your block, I mean, your strap, if you'd like for Paschimottanasana. So I'm gonna adjust the flesh. And let's start with the dorsiflex of our feet, which we used to do a lot more. So draw the ten toes back towards the kneecaps. Bring your inner ankle bones together and your inner legs together, but energetically draw out on your inner ankle bones. Take your arms out. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, come forward, grab the outer feet. Inhale, stretch up or bring your strap around your feet. And exhale, fold. Now, as you fold your torso over your legs, bring your leg bones down. Bring your leg bones down. Do the dorsiflex of your feet, guys. Get, grab your outer feet, do a dorsiflex of your feet. Really stretch your toes back. Now push your heels towards the top edge of your mat. Wind your elbows out so that you wind the front ribs, wind the back ribs. Good. And then inhale, look up and exhale to release. Perfect. And I hadn't done this one since my back started feeling better, but let's see where we go. I'm going to come onto the mat or come fly forward in front of my blocks. And I'm just moving here for, so that you guys can see me. But if you could see from where I was, I would have just slid forward in front of my two blankets and sat on the mat. And then I'm going to take this block up. I'm going to lean forward, really push into the block, bring the block to the feet. I'll bend the knees slightly, get a really good grip on the block, push into the block, straighten the knees, the outer legs go back, outer knees go back, outer hips go back, widen the elbows out, fold. Okay, so with the block, but start with the block here and move the torso up and forward and then take your block up, lift your side rib cage, come forward with that same extension through your fingertips, through your fingertips. You can bend the knees slightly here, bring the block to the feet, good. Now wiggle the hands down so that your pinky fingers come to the mat, good. Now to straighten the knees, I want you to push your heels into your blocks until your knees come as straight as they can get. Good. Upper legs down. Upper legs down. Shin bones down. Sitting bones up and over into the low back. Now, guys, can you bend your elbows by pulling on your yoga blocks? Elbows out. Great. And then you guys inhale up. Perfect. And exhale. Release. Excellent. Take. Okay, go ahead and we'll come over onto our mats for um, Adho Mukha Varasana, our child's pose. So we're gonna sit on the heels, externally rotate the outer hips, bring the side ribs inside of the inner knees and walk the arms out, bring the forehead down. So for the beginning of this, let's keep the elbows and the wrists lifted and then keep moving the, the space between your shoulder blades towards the mat to see if you can bring your chest all the way down onto your mat without dropping your elbows or your wrists. 
You can't tuck your chin towards the groove of your neck. You can kind of pull, push down with your hands and then kind of energetically pull your mat backwards with your hands. See if that will help get the chest a little bit deeper. That's wonderful, guys. And then go ahead and exhale and bend your elbows and let your elbows rest on the yoga mat. Let's bring the forehead up, bring the gaze up, bring the elbows up and the wrist bones. So they were here. You wanna lift the wrist bones up, lift the elbows up, rotate the inner eyes of your elbows up towards the ceiling. And let's go ahead and turn our fingers out. So they kind of rotate out to the side, spread the fingers as much as you can. Keep the wrists lifted, keep the inner elbows, I mean the elbows lifted, and then turn the inner elbows up. Push into your mat, push down and kind of push your mat forward. See if you can get your arms even straighter. Then once more, chin to the groove of the neck, forehead to the mat. Elbows are lifted, fingers are rotating out away from you so that you can rotate your upper arms externally. Great. And then from here, let's keep the elbows lifted, lift the head, come over to the hands and the knees. Once more, inner eyes of your elbows rotate out towards the top of your mat. Take your knees back and apart, bring your knees up, come to dog pose and we'll start with bent knees. Once you get the inner eyes of the elbows rotated to the ceiling, press the inner ankle bones, the inner knees, the inner thighs up, Take the hips up and then press your heels back and down into the mat. So that takes you really using your hands and your arms to get the length. Good. Upper leg bones move back. Upper leg bones move back. Perfect, guys. Lift the or draw your abdominal wall slightly away from your T-shirt. Good, keep your ears in line with your upper arms. Great, 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 great. And then exhale, come down and rest. And you can rest here any way that you'd like. Perfect, perfect. So if you wanna rest in child's pose, you can do that. Or if you just wanna sit on the heels to rest, that's fine too. Where did my, oh. I don't think we'll need that, but I'm going to do another dog pose. I was going to, I was going to use that, but I'm going to do another dog pose with blocks to the hand. So if you don't have a wall, that's okay. You can just use your mat like this. So I'm going to put the blocks on the mat. If you have a wall, you can put your blocks through the wall, but I'm going to grip over the yoga blocks with my hands, make them even take them a little bit apart. Watch, watch, watch. Rotate the inner eyes of the elbows out towards the top of the mat. Lift the knees, come to dog pose. I want you guys to grip over the block. And then I want you to lift the heels and begin to wiggle the legs back some, okay? So again, you can either put your blocks to the wall or out in front of you on your mat. Take a deep grip over those blocks and first rotate the inner eyes of your elbows out, top of your mat or towards your wall. And then come up very slowly, great, 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 great. And see if you can stretch the backs of your arms, great. Can you guys look at your inner elbows and see that they're not facing one another, but see if you can rotate them top edge of your mat. Top edge of your mat. So the further or the higher up we are into the pose, the harder that is to do. Perfect, perfect. Few more seconds, guys. Let's do this. Since we've got our hands against our block, I want you guys to go, up, go ahead and come up onto your tippy toes. So lift your heels up to the ceiling and then push with your hands. Push your leg bones back with your hands. Now exhale, keep your bottom up and then bring your calves and your heels down. 
So you come tippy toes, you lift up. And then as you exhale, you slowly press the heels to the mat. Perfect. And then you guys can release. Perfect. Just release. You can come down and rest. Darn it. And then I'm going to come up. And I'll start, I think when I come up, I'll start in um, <clears throat> um, Ut Utkatasana. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first one when I stand, I've got my blocks here, feet hip distance apart, and I want to take the inner thighs and move them out. Maybe we'll do this with a block between the upper legs as well. And then I'll come forward, take my inner thighs out, inner legs push out towards the outer legs, Bring the blocks right outside of the feet. So not here, guys, but I want us to come forward. Let the elbows bend and fold. Okay, so make sure that you find the evenness at your feet and have your blocks, whatever level that you need them, but right outside of your feet, right outside of your feet. Now take your inner ankle bones and kind of energetically stretch them out towards your blocks. Great, great. Now, can you guys lift the arches of your feet away from the yoga mat? So a good way to do this is I want everyone to shift forward into the padding of your toes or into your toe joint. And then once you get there, lift your 10 toes up, but press through the base of your big toe joint, press through the base of your pinky toe joint, Push down with your hands into your blocks, bend your elbows deeper. Now keep the lifting of your arch, but bring your 10 toes back down against the mat. But again, energetically lift the arches of your feet. Wonderful, wonderful. And then you guys can inhale, push down in your blocks, straighten your elbows, look out in front and then come up. <clears throat> Perfect. And so we'll do that one more time. This time I'm going to take a block and I think just one to the upper legs. And then when I get the block, I'm going to bring the feet as close as I can and I'll fold halfway, halfway where the torso is parallel. Watch with one hand, I'll take the hand of the block and I'm going to draw the block back, but squeeze at the same time. And then I'll reach down, grab the ankles or grab the shin bones, lean into the front of the feet as well as the back of the feet and fold. Okay, so the block is at the upper leg and then come halfway, fold halfway to start. Take one hand to the block and draw the block back, but press, pull the block in. So squeeze the block as you press it backwards. Now you guys should feel this, it opens up the back of your waist. Shift into the front of your feet. That's it, shift it. That's perfect, Esther. And then you guys, with an exhalation, let your hands slide down your legs, down your shins. Maybe they come to your ankles. Now try to fold your belly up and over the block. Try to get your belly up and over the block and bring your belly button close to the block. Good, 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 good. Once you get here, widen your elbows. You can even take your hands to the back of your ankles. But I want you to kind of draw on the ankles, lift them up, widen the elbows, relax the head and relax the shoulders. Great. Great, 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 great. And then you guys can inhale to look out in front of you and exhale, bring your hands up to your hips. That was so good. And then come up. Perfect. I'm going to do Parvita uh, Ardha Chandrasana against the wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my blocks out with my hands and I'm going to come forward like this. And then I'll step the right leg into the center. That leg's going to remain on the mat. And I'll take the left leg back to the wall. Now I want to get adjusted because I want this hip right underneath this ankle. I don't know if it is, but I'm going to think it is. And then I want to draw the right hip back, take the hand to the sacrum, draw the sacrum in and back, lift the chest, twist to the left. You don't need a block. Maybe you don't need a block. Here, twist to the right, to the right, not to the left. 
So the right leg stays on the mat. But when you come into this, hold your block and then fold forward with your hands on the block. You'll step your right leg in center and take your left leg back to the wall with your left toes pointing down towards the mat. That's it and stay here guys, stay here for a moment. So Diana, step your right leg back some. That's it, That not you, just Diana here. Good, 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 good. Now you guys go ahead and as you step your back leg up, your left leg comes to the wall, your left foot, go ahead and take your left heel out just a little bit to the left. That's it, and then push the wall. Push the wall. You can even kind of take your right toes, lift them up and take them out to the right, just a teeny bit. Give the external rotation on the bottom leg, internal on the top. Leave the left hand on the block, lift the chest, twist to the right. You can take the right hand to the sacrum, press the sacrum down and back. So the sacrum on that side of the hip goes down and back. Yep. Now lift the chest and look over the right shoulder. If you can, stretch the left arm up or right arm. Stretch the right arm up if you can. Again, think about that outer right rib cage rotating to the ceiling and the outer left rib cage to the mat. And then look down and release. Perfect. Perfect. So that twisting, guys, I knew when I put this shirt on that it wasn't going to really work today, but that twisting is here. Uh, we all, I talk about the thick rib cage, right? So we think about when you twist the lower half, like your hips and your, your pelvis stays where it is, right? That's the stabilizer. And then the spine twists here at the thick ribs. Do you see? So that twist is not here, but it's here. It's at the top. Okay, so switch sides, both hands to your block, so block, and then step your left leg in the center, right leg, right foot goes back to the wall. Push down, walk your blocks a little bit forward here. Now take your right heel out to the right slightly. Take your left toes slightly out to the left. Leave your right hand on your block. Left hand, go to the hip, draw the outer left hip back, move the left hand to the sacrum, draw the sacrum back towards the wall, look to the left, look to the left. Try to get that chest to rotate. Remember, thick ribs. The right one rotates down, the top one rotates up. Take the top arm up if you can, and you wanna reach through the fingertips as you look over the shoulder. Great, great, great. Exhale, look down, come up, perfect. Perfecto. Let's see, I'm trying to see how much room you guys have. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do it against the wall again, uh, but if you don't have the space to do it this way, stay, stay and do it the way that we just did it. This is if you don't have the space to use the wall long ways. So let me see if I can go here. Um, maybe you guys can see me a little bit better if I come to this wall. Again, you can use your block. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand with the left hip to the wall. I'm going to come forward. Now that left side of my body, the left hip is to the wall. And I want to draw it back. I'm going to walk my left right foot in. Take my block and my left hand out in front of me. Take the left, oops, take the left leg. I was like, Diana, what are you doing there? <laughs> take the left leg up and then watch. Rotate that left hip down. Leave the left hip, I mean left hand on the block. Lift the chest, twist. I want to put the back body to the wall here. Back body to the wall, shoulder blades, and look up towards the hand, okay? So when you come to the wall, you're at the wall with your left side. If this is the way that you can use your wall, maybe you can. But when you fold forward, step your outer left foot to the wall and your outer left hip. Put your hands down on your blocks. 
So your left arm, left shoulder is to the wall as well. Now step your right leg in towards your left foot. Take your left leg up, put that outer left hip, outer ankle bone, outer left foot to the wall. Rotate the outer hip down, left side. Walk the left arm out in front of you. Lift the right arm up and you can take the right hand to the sacrum, draw down, twist. Bring your back to the wall, your shoulders, your arm that goes up, bring the back of your hand. That's great. Look down, come up. That was perfect, guys. Really, really good. And then switch sides. So to switch, it's that right hip, right outer foot to the wall. And that gives you a little bit of direction of that hip. And so when that leg lifts, the right leg, you don't want to turn open, but really rotate down so that your hips are nice and square. So now that left leg stays on the mat, right leg goes up, the outer right hip, make sure it's against the wall, rotate it down, guys. Rotate the outer right hip down, good. Your right hand can stay grounded, look or twist, take the back of your body to the wall, Good, so you want your shoulder blades there. Good, 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 good. Lift your back leg a little bit, guys, and point. Michael, see, can you point your back toes? That's it, point, great. Look down and come up, perfect. Perfecto. Excellent. All right, now grab your blankets. And let's do... Uh, for fun, this isn't gonna be fun, but for fun, let's use two blankets in the Tootsie Roll or whatever this is, right? Hot dog, Tootsie Roll, taco, enchilada. Ah, gum, someone said a stick of gum one time. That's just too much to explain though, right? Like fold your blankets like a stick of gum. It's just better to say folded like a taco. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, ah, it's gonna be difficult. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take pinwheel. And so the pinwheel is, and I'm gonna turn this way so that you guys can see the left leg because that's the important leg. So when I get here, I bring the right leg up and I want to bring the outer foot to the blanket and the outer knee. And then that left leg goes out to the left at the exact same angle. You see, so left knee at a 90 degree angle to the left. Inner left foot is against the mat. And then you can lift up, hold your right foot down, lift up, draw your right hip back, not your right knee, not your right foot, just your outer right hip. Just your outer right hip. And you guys can kind of walk that uh, left foot back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then sit tall and let's see if we could lean to the left. Lean your weight over to the left and you'll start to feel that left hip, yeah? And Lisa's got her hand here. You can do that, you know, just sometimes just working through that. The muscles there may be tight or even cramping, right? So you can kind of massage the muscles there. And then for this one, what we need is an internal rotation of our back leg. So hold your right foot with your hand, hold your right knee with your hand, your outer knee. Well, not your outer knee, just hold your right foot Lift your right hip up, your right sitting bone, and take it back. Now lean to your left. Now lean forward and bring your chest even over <clears throat> your inner right leg. Now begin to take your left leg behind you. You'll keep your torso folded. And when you get that left leg behind, you can lift your left bottom up, draw your left buttock back, and then slowly bring your left outer hip and your left sitting bone, right side, sorry guys, right, right, right. So the right side go, that's it, Diana, that's perfect. 
And where I want us to really work is to get that left side to move down. That's great, Lisa. Great, great, great. Great, great. Now, guys, what I want you to do is, if you can, I want you to take your left leg and move it a little wider to the left. That's it. And then lean with that. Lean with perfecto. Bring your torso right over that inner ankle bone if you can. And then see that that left side of your body comes down towards the floor, towards the foot. Good. A few more seconds, guys. Just two more seconds here. And then release. Perfect. Perfecto. See what happens when my back feels better? Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so now you've got the left leg. And, you know, maybe you, this is it. Maybe you just can't go any deeper than this. But that right leg, to me, this is the tough side. It's the back leg that really gives me the most um, trouble, I think. And you feel the most tension especially around the hip flexor, yeah? So you can do that, again, that gentle massage there. You'll notice a lot of tight muscles and feels like ligaments and tendons and kind of, you know, sometimes they get bound up or you could feel a catch when you're rotating the leg, the hip a certain way. Now, Go ahead and take your, lift your right knee up and go ahead and move it to the right. And then that inner right foot down. Now that changes what's going on at your level of your hip. Check your hip points. Can you bring your hip points so that they're even? They're moving towards that front foot. And then come forward slowly. You draw that outer left hip back, come forward. And then guys, energetically draw that outer left knee back, outer left sitting bone back and up, and then stay leaning forward and make the adjustment on that right leg. Once you get your right leg back, look, you've got to kind of lift up and shift over to the right. And then once you get that, you can bring that left outer hip, left sitting bone down. So that right leg can move further out to your right. And it's not just your leg, but it's the entire outer right side of your body. Has to rotate towards your left foot. That's it, good. <laughs> now lean or draw energetically, pull the outer front hip and outer front knee back, and then try to lift up and try to be very even on your left side. So you don't want a lot of weight on your, even take your bottom off of your mat, see if you can adjust that way first, and then slowly bring your bottom back down. Great, great, great. Few more seconds. Perfect, perfect. And then exhale to release. Excelente. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two blankets, these same two blankets, and I'm going to fold them in the book fold. That. And if you want another blanket down for comfort, that's okay too, but I'm going to use these for the back of the head. Y'all know that one. And so when I come in front of my blanket, bend your knees and, and really use this to get the length in the lower back. So grab the mat, lift and tuck, connect the sacrum and tailbone to the mat, and then really kind of draw back. Keep that length there and then bring the blankets underneath the back of your head and let the shoulders do this, drop down to your mat, just like that. And then I'm making this really big effort to keep this length here. So if I've got two, I have to lift up, tuck, 
bring the abdominal wall towards the mat. And then we're just gonna stay here with the knees bent for a moment. And two, I can just take the arms out, palms up, really stretch out into the fingertips. If I can spread the shoulder blades away from one another. Perfect, perfect. And then I'm gonna bring my, I'm gonna keep my feet down. I wanna lift my bottom up and take it to the right just slightly. And then lift your knees up and let your knees, both of them go over to the left. So remember, before you let your knees go to the left, you have to lift up and take your bottom slightly to the right. And then when you bring your knees up, let them go over to the left, really draw them together and see if you can bring them down at the same time and look to the right. Now you may have to adjust so you can bend your elbows, put the backs of your arms on your mat. Lift your left shoulder blade up and take it to the left. Now, look to the right. Stretch the right arm out to the right and kind of reach to your fingertips. Now, let's take the left hand to the outer right knee. Go ahead and draw that inner right knee down towards your left knee. So your inner right knee pulls down towards your inner left knee. Now, Keep your left hand to your outer right knee, but your knees should be together. And then see if you can draw your outer right hip back towards your right hand. And then release, release the leg, the knee, and then you can bring the knees up. Now bring the feet down, lift the bottom just a little bit, take it out or a little bit to the left. Bring the knees up, let your knees go over to the right. And I'm really drawing the inner knees into one another. Once they come down, bend your elbows, lift your shoulder blades up, move your right shoulder blade to the right. Remember that thick rib twist that I talked about earlier? Twist at your thick rib so that outer left thick rib really moves around and down towards your yoga mat. You can look to your left. Now hold the knees together with your right hand and energetically pull your outer left hip back towards your left hand. And then with the exhalation, release, bring your knees back to the center. Now I'm going to do the same thing. So feet down, lift, move the hips, the bottom to the right some, lift the knees. I'm going to let them go to the left. Now hold here for a moment, adjust the shoulder blades, look to the right, and I'm going to see if I can bring the knees strongly together and straighten both of my knees. Keep looking to the right. You can even hold your knees together with your left hand, try to rotate your breastbone towards the ceiling, rotate your outer right hip down and back towards your right hand. So both of your legs are straight, but you're really going opposite of your legs and your feet. So make your right arm very, very active as you reach out. Now draw your hand into your outer leg and see if you can not only roll your outer hip down, but also draw your outer hip back. So it goes down and then back. Yeah. Pull it back as if someone is, use the resistance, bring your, your a hand against your leg and then really pull your outer hip back. Outer top hip goes back. Towards your fingertips. Good. And then bend your knees slowly. Try to keep them together as you bend them. Engage the core, bring the knees back to the center, and you'll go opposite. So the knees go up. Oh, well, bring your feet down, but lift your bottom and take your hips to the left. And then knees up and really focus on keeping those knees together, bringing them over to the right. And then you've got to adjust the shoulder blades first. So sternum or breastbone to the ceiling, adjust the shoulder blades, draw the knees together, straighten, try to straighten at the same time. 
Now that right hand can really draw that left leg down towards the mat. Now roll your outer left hip down and draw it back towards your left fingertips. Towards your left fingertips goes that outer left hip. If that hip bone could reach into your fingertips, that's your goal. And then roll your hip down to see if you can get more space around your left side rib. Great, great, great. Great, great, great. And then go ahead and bend both of your knees very slowly. And then see if you can bring them both up. Same time, place them on the yoga mat. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's grab our straps and you can keep your um, head on the blankets and your shoulders on the mat. And then grab one of your straps or grab a yoke strap. You probably only have one. <clears throat> Maybe you have two. And then really get that clearance of the, the low back so you can lift, you can even use your hands to really move the buttock flesh down. Think of that lifting of the front of your pelvis. And then let's take our strap around the right foot and go ahead and lift the right leg up. Now, go ahead and let's bring, slide your hands down the strap, let your elbows bend so you've got the backs of your arms on your mat. You've got, so watch, instead of here, we'll go down and then press the backs of the arms, keep the shoulder blades grounded. Good, good. Now move your thigh bone back so your right leg bone goes back towards the wall or towards your left foot. Let's go ahead and straighten the left knee and bring the back of your left leg down. Good, grab your strap, reach up high, grab with your right hand. Hold your yoga mat with your left hand, hold the outer mat, rotate the outer left arm to the mat. Now take your right leg out to the right, bend the right elbow, bring the back of your right arm to the mat. Now left hand now can go to your left upper leg bone, bring your leg bone down. Use your left hand to press the left thigh bone to the mat. Now draw your outer right hip away from you and tuck your outer right hip in towards your left hip. Bring your right leg up, take your left hand to your strap, take your right arm out to the right, look to the right, take your right leg to the left. Keep your gaze to the right, keep reaching out to your right fingertips. Now, everyone, see if you can bring your right buttock back against the mat. Keep your right uh, back of your hips there, your buttock, and then take your right leg over to the left again. Right leg over to the left. Let's widen that elbow. Externally rotate your left elbow and begin to bend it and so that the back of your left arm moves towards your mat. And then bring your right leg back. Now, both hands to your strap, go ahead and pull your right leg in towards your chest. Press your thigh bone away from you guys. Thigh bone moves away from the leg or away from the chest. And then bend the knee and release. Ugh. Perfect. So both, are knee, both of your knees are bent, your feet are grounded, you can lift and tuck. Make sure that you get that length. You know, you can always do this. Grab your mat and kind of pull back so that the mat pulls the sacrum down towards your heels. And then bring your strap around your left foot. Extend your left leg up. Do One more time. Let your hands go down the strap. Bend your elbows and let the backs of your arms come to your mat. Now press your left foot into the strap. See if you can bring your left thigh bone back towards the wall. Good, 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 good. Now go ahead and straighten your right knee. Straighten until you bring the back of that right leg all the way down against the mat. Now go ahead and grab your strap with your left hand. You can take that right hand, watch, it goes right to the top of that right leg bone and you draw it down heavily. 
and then left leg to the left, but you're trying to keep yourself grounded. So you can hold your mat, you can hold the top of your right leg, but all of your backside, right side should remain grounded. So that means strongly bring the leg bone down and make the front of your right leg long. Now that outer left hip, it tucks down towards the inner right heel and then tuck your outer right foot back towards your outer, I mean, your outer left hip back towards your outer right hip. And then bring your left leg up, switch the hand that holds your strap, look to your left. You could take your left arm out, take your left leg over to the right. Begin to bend that right elbow and back of the right arm can come onto the mat. You can also use your left hand L shape to really rotate that left hip away from you. Now bring your left leg back so that your left uh, back of your waist comes to the mat and then let your left leg go to the right a little bit deeper. Wonderful, wonderful. And then bring your left leg back to the center and you'll pull the leg into the chest. And you want to really straighten the leg. Pretend that there's a wall at the back of this left leg. So press the thigh bone towards the invisible wall. And then bend the knee and release. Perfect. Perfect, guys. Go ahead and let's bring the soles of our feet together. And you may need a prop, you may need blocks to the outer hips or the outer knees, but if you're okay here, really keep that lower back drawing down against your mat and your arms can go out to the sides, palms up. Relax the bottom. Draw the abdominal wall down, see if that will help the lower back reach into the mat. And then bring the knees together. You can keep your inner knees together. Lift your bottom and tuck. Take your feet out to the side. And then go ahead and bring your knees into your chest. And again, really move your hips opposite and you can interlace around your knees or your shins and kind of draw the legs in and any movements, if you wanna roll side to side a little bit, you can do that. And then roll over to your right and use your hands to bring yourselves up. Perfect. And we'll come for our back bends. So let's see, what have we not done in a while? Hmm. So for your back bend, let's do Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, and you can use a block for that. And then I'm trying to think, maybe, I'm just trying to think of a another way to do Setu Bandha with your blankets. And we used to do this with, um, um, uh, bolster, right? And you'd roll over the bolster. So I've got one, two blankets folded like the enchilada, one over the top, one on the bottom. Oh, that feels so good. And then I just kind of lift up and roll over that. And then I'll use this as my back bend. You guys can come set to Banda. Sarvangasana. And even though this is considered set to Banda, it's just not as high as your blanket or high as a bolster, but it's a nice back bend. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're doing this when you sit in front of the blanket or right at the edge of the top blanket and then roll over. 
see Esther. So it's it's um, two blankets, one like this, and then one on the mat, same fold, and they just kind of cross over each other. But if that's too much and it's too complicated, yeah, that looks good, Esther, try that, yeah. And really that's just spine length and then that one on the bottom that goes underneath, it's just a little bit of extra lift. Yeah, that's great, that's great. You gotta use your block too? Okay, does that work? Shoulders are grounded, mmm. Creating more new stuff, Diana. <laughs> Good. The, you, those of you that are in Setu Banda, make sure that your inner feet continue to work. You continue to press uh, into your inner feet, and that controls your hips. Good, 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 good. A few more seconds in your back bend. And remember in Setu Banda, you can straighten your knees. You can even put your feet on the wall if you're near a wall. Or you could keep your knees bent. And then guys, if you've had your knees bent, go ahead and, I mean, if you had your knees straight, go ahead and bend your knees, put your feet on your mat. And when you lift up, you wanna lift the hips up, tuck the sacrum and bring your block away. If you're on the blankets, Esther, you can roll over to the right and just kind of push yourselves up. If you're on your block, just tuck yourselves down and come uh, re remain lying down on your mat, knees bent. Now, I think what I will do is I've got two blocks and, I, and I'm only doing this because I'm not gonna do Urdhva Danyarasana. You guys, if you're working on your full back bend, please do that. If you're not quite there, this is a lot of uh, heavy work. But watch what you can do. What I'm going to do, because Urdhva Dhanurasana is troublesome for me, is I'm going to do Chatuspadasana a couple of times using my feet to the block. So I'll scoot in really close to the wall, and I'll put my feet on top of the block. So your feet can be all the way on or you can bring them back to the edge. And when I've got them at the edge, watch, I need to scoot in so that I'm able to reach down and touch the block like this, right? And this may be your first step. If you can go further, you're gonna begin to lift your hips and you wanna move your shin bones back as you come into chatus or set two. You see, so that's kind of a good way. Think about this, when you're coming into this pose, you don't want your knees to go that way, watch. You want your knees and your shin bones to go back. You see, so we work on taking this back away from the wall. So if you're gonna do that, do two of, of chatus using your feet to a block. If you're gonna do full back bend or a practice back bend, do two of those. Okay, so whichever inversion that you're going to do. Um, and I didn't say this, but for back bends, you could turn and put your hands on the blocks. And, and you know, you could even do a back bend with your feet on your blocks and your hands on the mat. That's a challenging way to do it, but it, but it is a way that exists. Not for me, but for some of you. That's good, Esther. That's great, Michael. Michael, see if you can rotate your toes in a little bit. That's perfect, though. That's perfect, perfect, perfect. That's it, Diana. See if you can get your um, chest up a little bit higher if you get your knees back a little bit. And then we go here. 
That's it. Nice, 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 nice. Nice, guys. And then when you've done two of whatever you're doing, <laughs> then we will roll up, or so if you're facing the wall, you can do this. You can just put your feet on the mat, and then we'll lift up straighten the knees and I'm going to fold. And when I fold this time, I'm not going to fold too straight, but I'm going to just let my hands go down my shins and bring the chin to the groove of the neck like this. And we'll do that to release the back. So whichever back bend that you did do, go ahead and still release your back the same way. Yeah, that's it. That's great. That's great. And, and then this one that you do kind of um, hollow at the abdominals a little bit. You do kind of pull your belly back some, but you're rounded. So think of that um, opposite of what we just did. A few more seconds here. Perfect. And then go ahead and come up. And when you come up, you'll exhale and kind of roll up one vertebra at a time. Now, I'm going to stay here facing the wall with my feet. And I'm going to come up onto one block, just like this. And I'll keep the left leg straight, left foot to the wall. I'll bend the right knee. I'm going to take the hand, left hand, twist to the right. So, Marichi Asana. So I'm seated on top of one block. The left leg is long, left foot to the wall, right knee is bent. <clears throat> and you've got about a fist distance from your block and your right heel. Yeah, that's great. And then lift really tall, twist to the right. That left hand can hold the outer right knee. Good, draw the outer right hip back. Good, good, good. Use your fingertips to the block maybe or wrap your right arm behind you to your left hip, twist, and then release and switch sides, perfect. So wrapping the arm around to the opposite hip would look that like this. So if I'm going this direction, you see, so here or the block, but now it's the left knee that's bent. I mean, uh, yeah, left knee, and you're twisting to the left. So if you're going to wrap the arm behind, try to get it to the right upper leg bone. Twist to the left. That's it. Good, 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 good. Use a little bit of that back right rib cage pulling away from the spine. Great. And then exhale to release. Perfecto. Um, your inversion, whatever inversion you want to do, maybe legs up the wall or headstand or um, arm balance, the, the um, Pinche Mayurasana pose, wall L, legs up the wall. Um, any variation, if you're not inverting today, maybe just come standing in Uttanasana or even Prasarita Paratanasana, or go legs up the wall. Nice, everybody. Good, 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 good. If you're in Shirsasana, make sure that you've got the uh, fingers interlaced so that you see the fingertips. Fingertips are against the back of the head, and you do cup your head. You do out, you literally cup the back of your head and hold it in your hand. With your sasana, relax your legs some so they don't, they're not um, overactive. When you're in your inversions, you want to take deep breaths so that you're, uh, you're breathing evenly and you're not holding your breath in your inversions. Perfect, guys. Perfect. Remember that you press down to lift your shoulders up 
away from the mat. And if you're in headstand, you can come down and maybe just do child's pose or you can come all the way standing. If you're in legs up the wall, you can stay there for a moment. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring myself up. And you can come up nice and slow. That's good, Diana. And what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to do just a little bit of shoulder work. I know it's kind of late in the game, but I just thought about this. So maybe at some point we can start working. And I thought about this for those of you in shoulder stand. I mean, in um, sure socks and a headstand because I really want to work a lot on moving the shoulders up from the mat and that whole pressing here. So we'll do the dolphin pose. So I'm going to come onto the hands and knees and bring the, the outer wrists, elbows. I'm going to draw them out and then pull them in so that the flesh adjusts. And then from there, I'll come up. I'll lift the knees up. And then if I don't walk the feet in, that's fine, but I want to really press and then walk in. And if you can go deeper, press. And then walk in. And if you can go deeper, press. Lift the shoulders up and lift the head up away from the mat. Okay, so we'll get the legs in as close to the hands as you can. And then Lisa, if that's not something you can do because your shoulder just modify somehow. That's great. So you press down. Push the shoulders up from the mat. And if you can do that, walk in. You can even tippy toe. And if you come to your tippy toes, notice that your shoulders go up as well. So not only does your bottom go up, but your shoulders go up away from the mat. So bring the feet in and the legs in as close as you can. Try to tippy toe to roll the bottom over towards the low back. Great, press your chest back towards your thighs. And then you can come down and rest. Good, 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 good. That was great. Okay, I'm going to sit on the mat. Now, this one is nothing that we normally do. I don't know why I'm doing this, um, but it's fun, and that's one reason. So what I'm going to do, and I don't want anyone to hurt themselves, so if this bothers your knee, don't do it. Okay, so... I don't think you need a blanket either. I don't know how to use a blanket for this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit, just sit on the mat normally. And I'm gonna take this left leg back, just like we did a moment ago, remember? We did that, we did this. So if you think about starting like this in a pinwheel, that'll work, right? And then watch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll to the right and turn so that this left knee is on the mat, just like that, and then I'll draw it in, right? And then I'm gonna let my weight be on that right hip, and I'm gonna reach down, pull the feet together, right? So again, start in pinwheel, that's a good way to start. And so if you can't go any further than this, that's a good way to start, right? And so what I did is that back leg, left leg is in the pinwheel. You guys lean over to your right, take your body weight to the right. Now lift the left foot and go ahead and roll to the top of the left knee. Grab the left foot with the left hand. Pull the left heel to the left sitting bone. So you want that left knee on the mat, top of the left knee on the mat. So roll, do an it. So you come from here to watch here, roll. And then reach down, grab your right foot with your right hand, bring the feet to touch. Bring the feet to touch. Put your weight on your right hip. That's great. Great, 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 great. And let's try the other side. Nice, everybody. It's very good. Very good. And I, I started out saying this was just something that's fun and interesting. 
So again, if you can't go very deep, you'll start in a pinwheel. And that, that gives you some work, whether you go all the way into this one or not, right? Now, the catch is when you lean over to your left, go ahead and try to roll. You see you're rolling that right side and then you'll grab that right foot and pull it in. This may be the only step that you can get. You can go deeper, put your weight on your hip, reach down, grab your left foot, pull them together. That's great, that's great, that's great, that's wonderful, perfect, and then release. I am totally impressed. Now, I think that's double pigeon. Well, I don't know, fire log is kind of double pigeon, right? But that's like, you know, the king pigeon is the one where you hold the leg like that, right? Behind you. So I think that that one's like a double, double king, double king pigeon. Even if that's not the name, that's what we're gonna call it. Okay, so let's just come lying down on our mats. We're done with all of that. And so we'll come down supine. And then I'm gonna do the knees bent, tuck the sacrum, I'm gonna cross the right over the left, take the L shape to really bring the legs down. Ah, I'll lift the left foot up and interlace the fingers behind the left thigh, bend the right elbow out, bring it into the inner knee and then pull your inner right foot in. Keep your bottom grounded though. Really keep your bottom against your mat. So let's take that left foot and make it active. Can you pull the back of your left leg in, but push your left foot away from you? Good. And then exhale, release. And we'll switch sides. So bring that left over. And then I can L shape to make sure that the upper leg bones move away. Lift the right foot, interlace behind the right leg, bend your, le your elbows out. Now you'll draw the outer left foot into the leg, but pull the inner left foot in to the chest. Ah, very good guys. So as you do this, push through your right foot, push the back of your leg into your interlaced fingers. And then exhale, release. Now, one more I'm going to do, I'm going to bring, well, not one more, but I'm going to do this one uh, going a little bit further than the one we just did. So I'm going to bring this foot up, right foot again. And instead of interlacing around, I'm going to lift up and grab that outer right foot with the left hand, outer right knee with the right hand. And then I'll straighten the left knee and then I just can rock the baby. Y'all know this one, just rock the baby. If you find the flexibility and you have the, the um, desire, you can lift up and pull it. Pull that inner leg in, use the core to do that. Or you can remain grounded on your mat. But let's see, let's try to keep that. Guys, when you're holding with your left hand and you're holding with your right hand, draw your outer right knee into your hand. Your outer right knee, press it into your hand. And again, you can rock the baby so that right leg can come in and rock out and come in and rock out a couple times. You can lift your head and shoulders and pull that inner right leg in and then lower the head and shoulders and release the right leg. Now watch, I'm gonna show you again. So if I'm here and I, I can lift my head and shoulders so I've got more space you know, more reach here and I'll grab here and I'll grab here and then I'll straighten. Now the catch is to keep this leg at that 90 degree angle. So from here, I'm gonna press this part of the knee into the hand. Do you see that? So not here, but here. And you can recline and you can rock the baby. Have good control. Um, of that leg and of your hip by using your hand. And then keep that, the outer part of your foot and the outer part of your left knee moving into your hand. 
moving away from you. Yeah. And then again, you can rock the baby. You can also at any point straighten the right knee if it wasn't straightened. And you can lift your head and see if you can pull into the leg. But you really got to get that um, resistance where your outer leg is moving away. Wonderful. And then exhale to release. Excellent. Excellent, guys. That's all I'm going to do for that. So straighten your legs and then we'll bring the, and so you can take your time. You may need to bend your knees for a moment, lengthen your bottom, bring your sacrum down and you wanna bring your belly down and then see if you can straighten your knees while keeping your abdominals at the mat. So you're not trying to lift the spine at all. And then let's inhale, take our arms up, start in a sleepwalker. Pull the abdominal wall strongly down, arms over the head. See if you can reach the mat at the same time with your thumbs, palms face each other. Pull the abdominal wall down. Now see if you can turn the palms of your hands to the floor and then reach through your fingertips or walk through your fingertips to straighten your elbows, abdominals down. And then exhale to release. Good, you can release the Arms, perfect, perfect, perfect. Go ahead and I'm gonna bend my knees one knee at a time and put the feet on the mat. Lift and tuck the sacrum and the tailbone. Take the arms up in that sleepwalker. Reach up and then go over the head. Keep the abdominal wall, wall towards your mat or on your mat. So your abdominal wall moves towards your mat. Keep your knees together. Now. Bend your knee or drag your toes towards your bottom and lift your feet. Now pull your knees in all the way into your chest. Keep your abdominal wall down and then straighten your knees. Really press into your feet. Press into your feet. Let's bring the legs back so those outer hips come back. Keep moving the legs back. That's it. Move the legs back. Now bring the abdominal wall down. Turn the palms of your hands to the mat, bring the abdominal wall down and bring the palms of your hands onto the mat. Keep the belly grounded and keep reaching through your legs. A little bit deeper guys, reach up, reach up, perfecto. And then go ahead and exhale, bend the knees, put the feet on the mat and you can release the arms. Now this one is a little more complicated and I don't even actually know if I could do it, but it's Jadhara, which is our, it's the core movement. And um, in, in Iyengar yoga, they consider it um, abdominal work or they call it um, um, churning, stomach churning poses so that you increase the strength at the core, right? So what I'm gonna do, y'all watch for just a moment is I'm gonna Hold the mat, bring the abdominal wall down, and I'll go ahead and I'll lift the legs up again, right? Now this time I'm gonna bend the right knee, got the arms out, I'll bend the right knee and I'm gonna squeeze the knees together. Actually, not yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the knees, bend the knees, feet up, take the bottom over, take the legs up. So the bottom went to the left, the hips went to the left, and then I'll bend the right knee. And then I'm going to take this left foot and swing it over to the right hand. If I can catch the foot, catch the foot. And then I'll ground the backs of the arms. Bring the legs up, straighten the knees, switch. You've got to lift your hips over to the right. Take the right foot to the left hand. You can grab the foot. And we'll bring the legs up. Bend the knees and maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that twice. Okay, so <clears throat> bend your knees, put your feet on the mat, grip your mat, lift your bottom, tuck your sacrum and your tailbone, and then bring your abdominal wall down. And then lift both of your legs straight up. Now, once you get your legs straight up over your, over your hips, then you'll go ahead and take your arms out, palms up. Now bend your right knee, lift your hips, take them to the left, Take your left foot to your right hand. 
Take your left foot to your right hand. Maybe you can hold the foot. Good. Look opposite. Look opposite. Great. Great, 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 great. Now release the foot. Engage the core. Squeeze the knees. Bring the legs up. Beautiful. Straighten both knees. Um, switch sides. Bend the left knee. Lift your hips. Take your hips to the right. Take your right leg, your right foot towards your left hand. Go towards the hand, that's it. And if you can, you can grab, engage the core, can grab the foot, roll the hip down, look opposite, look to the right. Wonderful, squeeze the knees, release the foot, bring the legs up, feet to the mat, and that's it. So you can pull your knees into your chest. Maybe just wrap your arms around your knees and if you wanna, move side to side or even front to back. You can do that. And then I'm gonna come for Shavasana. So if you want, you can just take your arms out, extend your legs, you can tie your feet. You can take your legs up the wall or whatever combination of those things that you would like to do for Shavasana. You can also um, bring blankets underneath your spine or the back of your head. <laughs> no harder than your right. <laughs> now tomorrow, and I forgot to tell y'all this, but tomorrow is, I'm going to call it intermediate, not advanced. Because I just realized I, I can't really do advanced poses. So... <laughs> It's not funny, but it, it's true. Oh, well. It's what happens when you get over 35. It starts going down. Ah, so take your arms out, palms up. You can close your eyes and relax for a few moments in Shavasana. Allow heaviness, every muscle, every bone, and every organ. And as you begin to relax for Shavasana, check that the tongue is moving away from the top of the roof of the mouth. So check that the eyeballs are moving away from the eyelids. Make sure that the upper and the lower jawbone are relaxed and the teeth at the back of the mouth are also relaxed. The abdominal wall begins to relax as well and your organs begin to move away from the abdominal wall and move towards the mat.
begin to deepen your breath and very slowly move your awareness back into the room. Small movements in the fingers and in the toes. As you exhale the breath, you can bend the elbows and bring the hands to the belly or the heart. Stretch your arms up and over your head, full body stretch. Bring the abdominal wall towards the mat. And then as you exhale the breath, release the arms to the side body and just rest there for a few moments. Bend the knees one at a time. The feet can come to the mat, the floor, the wall. And then as you deepen the breath, bring the knees into the chest and wrap the arms around the knees in any movement, side to side or front to back. And then as you exhale, roll to the right and hold there in a fetal position. Right arm can support the head. And then bring yourselves up seated, any seated position that you would like. Hands can come heart center, third eye, or just resting at your legs. Yoga has a very developed system for one to look within. Its profound path reaches right up to the realization of the pure self, the breath and the mind. Culture of yoga develops tranquility and insulates a person from ups and downs of life. Thank you guys so very much for being here. Namaste.